Hey, welcome back. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick update on how I've got on with this MPP solar inverter station build I did last year. So some of you may have noticed that I recently reissued the original video, but that was to cover the breaker installation change that I'd made. So I contacted the manufacturers and they actually gave me the specs and the way it should be installed. So I followed their instructions, even though they said it could be installed either way. So as you'll see now, the labourers are actually pointing downwards where originally they were pointing up. So to switch these on and actually make the circuits whole, you actually push them down now as so. So it's, that's the battery one and obviously that's the solar panel one. And the indicator remains the same no matter what way they're orientated. So it's now saying red meaning that circuit's live. But the only other thing you might notice is slightly different on here is the fact I'm not using a case battery. So this battery here was sent to me by a manufacturer to test and then do a video of my results and how I got on. So I can't show you the label at the moment, but that's testing out well at the moment as well. But apart from that, I've actually changed nothing, even though I said in that video I would be changing lots because it was the Mark 1 build. But really, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's just worked flawlessly. But there is one thing I have changed. Switch on inverter. Sure, turning the inverter on. So yes, I added a switch bot. So I can now effectively control this anywhere there's a Wi-Fi or 4G signal. So again, that's probably the only things I've changed on this Mark 1 build. And it's just worked as I've needed it to work, home or away. So something else that's worked out really well with this is connecting solar panels and how flexible this particular build has been. So even though it has MC4 connectors down there, if you get the right cables, I've pretty much been able to connect everything that I have to this. And that really opens up the flexibility element. If you want to travel around with this and carry some lighter panels, like something like the Jackery Solar Saga panels, for example, because they're light and they're easy to store away and they're quite flat. Or when I'm at home, I can connect up the beefier panels like my JA solar panels, which are 340 watts. So put a couple of those in series, which I'm just going to show you now. Two of these 340 watt panels connected in series and they're from JA solar. And I'm just going to put up something on screen now showing you the kind of inputs I got on the MPP last summer. And I'm also now going to show you just how I connect up the Jackery solar panels, both two panels at once and then a panel on its own. So I've got the two Jackery panels connected up now in parallel using the Jackery connector, which is right there. And then that plugs into the other Anderson connector of the other lead, comes all the way round and then up into the MC4 connectors there. So I'm just going to try and get in close now to see if we can find out what it's giving us. And there we have it, a very respectable 180 watts. So I'm now in single panel mode using the panel closest to us. So that's obviously connected up using this cable here. Comes all the way round again. Plugs into the other Anderson connector which goes all the way round into the MC4 inputs there. So let's try and get close again and see what we've got on here. And that's actually showing 110 watts which is amazing off of a single panel, bearing in mind this is a 100 watt panel. So as you've just seen with the Jackery solar panels, you can actually take an MC4 connector and actually change it into a DC input. So you can connect up a Jackery panel, which unfortunately the DC 8mm inputs are a little bit more troublesome to hook up. And then you can just connect the Anderson connectors directly together. So all you do is you line up the two colours and they just hook together like so. So it really is that simple. And the same also applies if you just want to use the one uh, solar panel on its own. This was the other cable that you might have seen. So this also comes with a little adapter here to change an eight millimeter input into a standard DC input there. And again, you can just plug them in together like so. And you can actually hook up just one Jackery solar panel again. So if you want to travel light, that's perfect for this or any other system that's not actually a Jackery solar generator in its own right. In summary and so far, this build has actually turned out better than I was expecting. So for example, in terms of solar panels, I can use the most appropriate for home or away. And with the ability to change out the 12 volt batteries, I can actually store energy up, unlike all in one systems, I'm not tied to one unit. So I can swap batteries out as and when I need them, whether that's to cover a storm or off grid situation at home, or whether it's just to go away, I can store that power up and just take it with me. 
And in terms of the general build, I would like to make it more compact in future. And also maybe a slightly larger inverter to power the larger things, but that's going to be covered by a 24 volt system I'm currently working on. So that's really that on this. So if you do have any questions, just pop them in the section below. And if you did find this useful, just pop us a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And anyway, stay tuned to Da Vinci.